Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. Since Edahan has released its latest version, version 2.5b, with many significant new features and improvements, in this video I'm going to show you several ways to update the Edahan payload to the latest version, or to any version you want. This tutorial can also be applied to other payloads, such as KStuff. Alright, without any further delay, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Alright, first, we need to download all the required files. The first one, of course, is the latest Etahen payload version 2.4b. Here, I'm already on the GitHub page, and as you can see, there are several new features added. We'll try them out later. Just click here to download it. Next, we also need to download the Y2JB Update Autoloader. This file will later be copied to the PS5 internal storage to automatically load the latest Etahan payload. Of course, we need to set up the script first, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. After that, download the latest version of the Items Flow Game Manager application, which already supports Etahan version 2.5b. Lastly, download the PS5 Explorer application. We need this app to copy the autoload script and the Etahan payload to the PS5 internal storage. Okay, at this point, all the files we need have been downloaded. Next, plug your flash drive into the computer and make sure the flash drive is formatted as XFAT. Then, copy both PKG files to the root folder of the flash drive. Now, open the Y2JB update folder. Here, I've already extracted the compressed file. Then, copy the PS5 autoloader folder inside it to the root folder of the flash drive as well. Open the PS5 autoloader folder that's now on the flash drive, and then copy the etahen payload file into this folder. Next, open the autoload.txt file. We're going to edit this file so the autoload script runs the etahen payload located in this folder. If you look at the bottom here, by default, the autoload script is set to run the FTP server payload. We can simply delete that and replace it with the etahen file name. Make sure the file name matches exactly, including uppercase and lowercase letters, and also includes the file extension with .bin. If the file extension is not visible on your computer, you can enable it by going to the View menu, highlighting Show, and then checking File Name Extensions. Now, to make sure the name is correct, select the Etahen Payload file, right-click it, choose Rename, then select All, right-click again, and choose Copy. After that, paste it into the autoload.txt file. Don't forget to click Save once you're done. Now we can close the autoload.txt file. Everything is ready. Finally, eject the flash drive from your computer and plug it into your PS5. Now let's move over to the PS5. Next, we're going to activate the jailbreak using the Y2JB method by launching the YouTube application. Once again, make sure the flash drive is already plugged into the PS5 before launching YouTube, because the latest Edahen payload will be loaded from there. Okay, now we wait for the jailbreak process to run. And as you can see, the Edahen starting notification appears on the right side of the screen. This is one of the indicators of the latest Edahen version. Of course, the jailbreak process doesn't always succeed on the first try. If that notification doesn't appear, you'll need to restart your PS5 and try again. Also make sure the Y2JB autoloader setup on the flash drive is correct. Alright, so at this point, Eta Han has been loaded from the flash drive. To make sure it can be loaded later without using a flash drive, we need to copy the PS5 autoloader folder to the PS5 internal storage, specifically to the data folder. For this, we first need to install the PS5 Explorer application, and at the same time, we'll also install the Items Flow Game Manager, since both PKG files were already copied to the flash drive earlier. So, go to Settings, 
scroll all the way down to Ida Hen Toolbox, then select Package Installer. Here you can see the two PKG files on the flash drive, Items Flow and PS5 Explore. Go ahead and install both by selecting Install All. If a confirmation window appears, just choose Yes. In my case, it shows up because Items Flow was already installed, but it was still an older version. Once the installation process is complete, go back to the PS5 home screen. As you can see, the Items Flow and PS5 Explorer applications are now available. Now we can finally copy the PS5 autoloader folder to the PS5 internal storage. For that, go ahead and open PS5 Explorer. Select Root Access, then navigate to the flash drive by pressing the left or right directional buttons if it doesn't appear right away. We're going to copy the PS5 underscore autoloader folder to the PS5 internal data folder. Highlight the PS5 underscore autoloader folder, press the triangle button, choose Send To, and then select Data. Okay, done. Your PS5 is now using the latest EDA hen payload during the jailbreak process, without needing a flash drive anymore. You can test this by unplugging the flash drive first, then restarting your PS5, and launching YouTube again to activate the jailbreak. The EDA hen version that loads should now be the latest one. If it still shows the old Ida Hen version, open PS5 Explorer again and go to the data folder, then answer the PS5 underscore autoloader folder. The issue is most likely here. Sometimes the latest autoload.txt file gets converted to all uppercase letters when copied. This often happens when copying files using PS5 Explorer, and honestly, I'm not sure why it changes everything to uppercase. To fix this, simply delete the old autoload file. then rename the new autoload file so it's all lowercase again. Like this. You can also delete the old payload and any other unnecessary files if they're still there. Now try activating the jailbreak again by restarting your PS5 first. And that's the first method to update the EDAHEN payload or KStuff if you only want to use KStuff without EDAHEN. Now let's move on to the second method for updating the EDAHEN or KStuff payload. The main thing we'll do is the same which is copying the autoloader folder to the PS5 internal data folder. The difference is that this time we'll copy it from the computer via FTP, so we won't be using a flash drive or the PS5 Explorer application like before. All right, let's get started. First, download and install an FTP client application on your computer. In this example, I'm using real FTP, but you can also use other similar applications such as FileZilla or WinSCP. Once it's installed, go ahead and launch the application. Next, we need to fill in the host and port. To get this information, we need to go back to the PS5. First, make sure your PS5 is connected to the same local network as your computer. Here, we need to set up the network connection manually so the PS5 doesn't connect directly to the internet, but only to the local network. I'm taking this part from a clip of one of my other tutorial videos. Open Settings, go to Network, then select Settings. Make sure Connect to the Internet is enabled. Then select Setup Connection. Here, we need to manually configure the network connection. This prevents the PS5 from checking for updates on any installed apps, including YouTube. Even though the Y2JB backup already includes a YouTube update blocker, this is still an important step. To set up the connection manually, scroll down and choose Setup Manually. Select your connection type. In my case, I'm using Wi-Fi then choose Enter Manually. Now we fill in the fields. Starting from the top, for SSID, type the name of your Wi-Fi network. For security method, choose WPA Personal since that's the most commonly used. Then enter your Wi-Fi password. For IP address and DHCP hostname, leave them at their default settings. The most important part is the DNS settings. Change this to Manual. Then set the primary DNS to 127.0.0.2. When everything is filled in, choose Done. Wait for the connection process to finish. You'll get a message saying can't connect to the internet. Just ignore it because that's exactly what we want. Select OK. 
Once the PS5 is connected to the network, launch the YouTube application to activate the jailbreak. The main purpose here is actually just to activate the built-in FTP server from the EDAHEN payload on the PS5. As you can see, the activation process is running, and here I'm still using the older EDAHEN version, version 2.3b. You can see the PS5 IP address and the FTP port we need right here. You can also find the same IP address in console information inside the settings menu. The IP address may be different on your setup, but the FTP port will always be the same, which is 1337. Now let's go back to the computer. Enter the PS5 IP address into the host field. Leave the username and password empty. Then set the port to 1337. Finally, click Quick Connect to connect to the PS5 FTP server. When this confirmation window appears, just click OK. Now you're looking at the PS5 internal storage. Next, open the data folder. If you already have a PS5 underscore autoloader folder here, delete it first. Then copy the PS5 underscore autoloader folder that contains the auto.txt file we already configured earlier, along with the latest EDAHEN payload inside it. In this example, I'll reuse the same files from the flash drive we prepared earlier, so we don't need to set everything up again. To copy the folder, simply drag and drop it like this. Okay, done. Now disconnect the FTP connection to the PS5, and let's go back to the PS5. Next, we're going to rerun the jailbreak process. First, disable the network connection, because we don't need it anymore. Then restart your PS5. Once the PS5 boots up again, launch the YouTube application to activate the jailbreak. The jailbreak process will start. And as you can see, the EDAHEN starting notification appears on the right side of the screen, which indicates that the latest EDAHEN version is now being used. And that's it for the second method of updating the EDAHAN or KStuff payload. Now let's move on to the third method. All right, now for the last method to update the EDAHAN or KStuff payload. This method is faster and simpler, but it's also more aggressive because it will erase all data on your PS5. This method is more suitable if you want to set up your PS5 from scratch and don't care about any existing data or applications already installed on the system. The idea is to restore a PS5 backup file from someone else that has already been set up with the latest EDAHEN version. You can get this backup file from a friend who has already updated EDAHEN to the latest version, or you can use a backup file shared online, such as the one from More One. As you can see in his tweet here, he has shared a backup that already includes EDAHEN version 2.5b. You just need to click the link above to download it. Once the download is complete, extract it. Then copy the PS5 folder to the root directory of a flash drive that has been formatted as XFAT. After copying, eject the flash drive from your computer and plug it into your PS5. Now let's move over to the PS5. On the PS5, go to Settings, then System, and under System Software, select Backup and Restore. Since this process will delete all data on your PS5, including saved games and any installed applications or games, if you want to backup your own data first, select Backup your PS5 and follow the backup process. The backup file will be saved to the flash drive you have connected using a different file name from the backup file we copied earlier. Once you're done, or if you don't want to backup your data, select Restore your PS5. Then choose the restore file that you downloaded earlier. Continue with the restoration process and your PS5 will restart at least twice during the restoration. In my case, I'm not going to continue with this step because I have important save data on my PS5 and I don't want to use someone else's backup. This is just for illustration purposes. And that's the final method to update the EDAHAN or KStuff payload in this tutorial. 
If you have any other methods, feel free to share them in the comments, especially if you know a faster and simpler way, so it can be a useful reference for others. Alright, that wraps up this tutorial. I hope this video helped you understand the different ways to update the EDA Hen or KStuff payload on your PS5. Whether you prefer the simple flash drive method, the FTP method, or the full restore setup for a clean start. If you found this guide useful, don't forget to like the video, share it with others who might need it, and subscribe to the channel for more PS5 jailbreak tutorials, updates, and tips. If you have any questions, run into issues, or know an even faster and simpler method, feel free to leave a comment down below so it can help other viewers as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.